Hi guys, I'm Leo from MediaWay and today I'm going to share the secrets of car lighting in Blender using only free assets and free software. Professional car photographers are using these same techniques in studios costing thousands and I'm going to teach you how to do it for free in Blender. We're going to cover two setups, one in EV and one in Cycles, where I'm going to show you every step covering lighting techniques, where to get free car models, render settings and using the compositor. Let's get started. Okay, we'll start off with the default scene in Blender. We'll press A to select everything, then X and click on delete to delete everything. The next thing we're going to do is add a plane. Shift A, add a mesh plane. S to scale it, just make it a bit bigger. It's not crucial, the size. Press tab to pop into edit mode. If you see up here, we want to select the edge select. The shortcut key for this is also number two. Click on the, the edge that's furthest away from you. Press E to extrude. Press Z to constrain it on the Z axis. Just pull it up a, a bit. Click on the middle line. Press Control and B to add a bevel. Just roll your mouse wheel a few times. Just add a few more loops in there and click. And then press Tab to pop out of edit mode. If you right click on this, click Shade Smooth, we've got a lovely seamless background which we're going to use for the shot today. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is install Blender Kit if you don't have it already. Um, there's a link in the description below. Press N on the uh, keyboard and you'll see this little pop-up menu on the side and then click on Blender Kit. We're going to use some of the, the free models. Um, if you click on the categories and click on Transport, click on Car, and then click on racing car we're going to use. There's a really, really nice, in fact, let's just um, search filters. If you click on free first, it shows you the free models first. Let's just do that again. Click on racing car. There's a great Ferrari here. We're going to use this. So literally just click and drag it onto your scene and pop it in the middle of the studio setup. Once that's downloaded, let's just have a quick look at it. It all looks good. We can see on here, it's not quite touching the floor. We just fix that very easily. Just go into wireframe mode, just to make it move a little bit quicker. Click on the Ferrari in the outliner, press G. In fact, let's press number one on the keypad first. You can see here, that black line here, that's the plane. And if you just press G on the keyboard and Z to constrain in the Z axis, we'll just move it down a fraction. Just till those wheels are touching the floor. That's perfect. Right, pop back into look dev mode. Okay, we're gonna add a camera now. So shift A, go down to camera. You can see the default camera's position is not very good here. So let's just sort that out. So we're gonna set the rotation to 90 degrees on the X. Uh, on the Z, we'll set it to naught degrees. No, we won't, we're gonna set it to 90 degrees, that's right. And then we're just gonna press G, and then Z, we'll just move it up on the Z axis, and then G and X, and we're just gonna move it back on the, the X axis. So it should be around there. So on your number pad, press zero to view in the camera mode. That's not a bad guess, is it? Okay, on the camera settings on the right here, we're just gonna set this, instead of 50 millimeters, uh, you can go wide angle or you can go telephoto. And we're gonna go a little bit telephoto. We're gonna go to 70 millimeters on the focal length. That's just gonna compress the perspective a bit. So now, because we've compressed the perspective, we just need to pull out a little bit on the X up here till we can fit the car all the way in. Um, I'm also gonna move up a little bit on the Z. And we'll angle the camera down very, very slightly on the X to kind of center it. Uh, I think we'll, we're gonna we'll just tweak the car a little bit. Let's just click on the car again, click into wireframe mode, press G, and if you actually press Shift and Z, it basically allows you to move on every axis apart from the Z axis. And we're just gonna move this, let's just go back a bit. Uh, and that's about perfectly, perfectly centered in the frame. Okay, great. The next thing we're going to do, let's pop into our render view. Let's have a look what this looks like. So at the minute, there's no lights in the scene apart from the world light, which is just here. 
Um, and as you can see, you can actually make this brighter or darker. But obviously, it's very flat lighting. You'd never use this in a real world. We'll leave it at one just so we can see what we're doing. Uh, let's just change some of the EV settings. So at the minute, we've got rendering engine set to EV, 64 samples. We're going to switch on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space, screen space reflections. Okay, let's add some lights. So press Shift and A, and we're going to add in an area light. G to grab, Z to grab on the Z axis. Press seven on your number pad to go into top view. G to grab. Let's move it exactly over the center of the car. And we're gonna scale it in the Y axis. So it looks roughly like that. And let's just scale in the X axis, just so it kind of almost fills the car. Okay, so this is our first light. So this is like a top light. So if we pop back into the camera view, Let's change the world setting so we can see exactly what this is doing. So this is a nice top light. So this is actually already a good start. Let's just increase the brightness of this. So yeah, something around the 180 looks nice. So you're getting a lovely sort of pickup in all the reflections of the car, just to accentuates the car body. It looks great already. The next thing I'm going to do, we're going to add a rear light. So if you look in the camera view, I just kind of want to pick out the very edges of the car just to give it a nice outline against the background. So with the light selected, we're going to press, let's pop into top view, which is seven on the number pad. We're going to press shift and D to duplicate the light. We're just going to move it across in the X axis. We're going to rotate it in the Y axis. So it's kind of pointing down a bit like that, and that's much too bright still. We don't want it too bright. Let's just take the brightness down a little bit. So something around there, something around 67 watts. Now back in the camera view, I'm just gonna move this down, G to grab, Z to move in the Z axis. And I just want this light very subtle just to pick out. So let's just move it down. So if you look at the rear spoiler, for example, you just see it's being picked out, this nice little highlights just across the top there. And we're going to duplicate this light again. Uh, let's go to top mode again, seven, shift D, X to constrain the X axis. And we're going to have this in the front light and we're going to rotate again in the Y axis so it's pointing at the car, back into camera mode. And we've got this now, this is starting to look really great. Let's just turn this front light down a little bit. Something around 30 watts. Okay. And then finally, to give this nice, in fact, there's a couple of things we need to do. So just in camera view, you can see the, uh, the front, the background plane doesn't quite extend to the bottom of the camera frame. So just press tab to pop into edit mode, select that front edge, G to grab and X to constrain to the X axis, just pull it forward a bit. Okay, that's it, that's sorted that. So tab out, back into object mode, we're gonna press Shift and A, we're gonna add it in a spotlight. G to grab it, Z to move up in the Z axis, R to rotate, Y to rotate in the Y axis. We're gonna point this spotlight exactly in the back of the thing. Let's just turn the brightness up so we can see it. Um, so if you just change the blend so it's much softer, we're gonna go into camera mode with by pressing zero on the number pad. Let's just expand that out a little bit. Grab it on the Z. I just kind of want a nice vignette just going around there. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger still. G to grab in the Z. And that looks pretty good. Let's render that by pressing F12. Wow, that looks terrific. Okay, for our next render setup, we're actually gonna swap into the Cycles render engine. Um, make sure this is set to GPU compute. Um, check your render samples down to 128, that should be enough. And make sure denoise is on. The same with the viewpoint sampling. Okay, the reason we're going into Cycles is because it supports emissive materials a bit better than Eevee. So we're gonna delete the Ferrari. So click on the Ferrari in the collection, right click, 
delete hierarchy. And we're gonna add in a different car this time. So if you pop back to Blender Kit, click on standard car, and you'll see there's this gorgeous Mercedes-Benz AMG C63, which we're gonna drag into our scene. Okay, so the C63 we want from the front view, so we're gonna select it in the outliner, press R to rotate, Z to rotate on the Z axis, then type minus 90. And that rotates it to the front angle. Let's just pop into the camera view. Uh, and what we'll do, we'll just, let's uh, just move the camera slightly forward. So just click on the camera and we're gonna just move the camera forward a little bit. And I think we're just gonna move it across a little bit on the Y just to center it, that's it. Okay, so with our lights selected, we're gonna use the same lights, but we're gonna switch them around a bit. So if you click on both side lights, both area lights, it might seem they're called area two and area three. Press seven to pop into the top view. Press R to rotate and Z to rotate on the Z axis. Just flip them around to 90 degrees exactly. Okay, let's just start to have a look at what we've got. So we're gonna switch some of these lights off. So let's just switch some of these spotlights off, pop into the camera view. Let's have a look what we've got. Okay, so what we're trying to go for here is a much more moodier light, something quite dramatic and quite exciting. So these lights here at the side, I'm gonna set them both to the, be the same. So set them both to be around 60. And then we're gonna just rotate them a little bit on the Y. So I want them to point up and I'm gonna scale them down a little bit as well. So you can just rotate using the, the transform outline here, just rotate them so they're pointing up slightly, scale them a bit. I'm just gonna press G to grab, uh, Z to move on the Z axis, just move them down a little bit. Maybe just move them out of shot. G to grab, Z to move down, grab Y to move it out of the shot. Okay, so we've kind of got this quite moody looking lighting. So what I want to do, I'm just gonna bring both of these lights forward just very slightly. So grab X to move on the X axis and you can move them forward and back. And you actually can get a fairly good idea of how the lights are gonna look just by moving them like this. So we're just gonna move them forward because I just want the very outsides of this grill just to be highlighted a little bit. Okay, let's switch another one of these lights on. So we're gonna switch the back spotlight on. And to give this a bit more drama, so we're talking about this light here at the back. Let's just grab it, we're gonna move it on the x-axis just so it's highlighting the back background there. In fact, let's make the floor a bit darker. Let's give the floor a material. Let's just set it to be sort of a bit of a dark gray. With this back spotlight highlighted, we're gonna change the color to red and I think we're gonna make it quite a bit brighter. So let's just slide the brightness up a bit. I'll pop back into the camera view. See, this gives us quite a nice dramatic red vignette at the back of the car. Um, I think we're just gonna to want to highlight that and draw a bit of attention to the Mercedes badge. Let's just get rid of this registration plate. So click on that, press X and delete it. Um, so we're just gonna duplicate this light here. Seven into top view, press Shift D to duplicate, drag it. So it's pointing at the front of the car. Obviously that's way too red. So we'll put the color back to white and we're gonna take the brightness right down, all the way down. We just want a little bit of drama on this on this front badge. Maybe 30 watts. Let's grab it, grab it, move it down on the Z axis. So we can just see it highlighting here. And that just gives a beautiful little highlight in the Mercedes badge just here. Finally, I just want to lift the back of the car out a little bit so we can see it better. So with the final spotlight that's currently been hidden, it's the top one. Let's just pop into a different view so we can spot it easier. So it's this top one here, this top area light that we had on the other car. What we're going to do, we're gonna rotate this. So press R to rotate, Y to rotate on the Y axis. And we're just gonna grab it, so in top view, grab it, and we're just gonna move it towards the back of the car. Now, if I go back into the camera view, 
we're just lifting the top of this car out of the picture so let me just grab that just move it just so we've got a nice highlight across the top of the car and across the front of the car like that so that's really nice okay now press f12 to have a render that looks really good the only thing i want to do i'm just gonna this floor is just a little bit too light here i'm just gonna change that the color of this uh plane here just to darken the floor off a bit so just change the base color i'm gonna actually make it black and let's push the roughness up so it doesn't reflect so much light we've lost some of the red around the back so i'm just going to increase the strength of that back light let's just check that we've got the right one it's called spotlight there let's just increase the strength of that a bit more let's go for something a bit stronger 5000 watts might, that might be enough let's go a little bit more 6000 watts let's render that that looks really nice so one last thing we could do in the compositing tab if you click use nodes we're going to add a viewer shift a just search for a viewer node so we can see what we're doing just join that to that so you can see the image we're just going to add in a a glare node so what you need to do is select the output of the glare node all right that's not quite the look i'm going for let's try fog glow and just tweak the mix down a little bit just want a little bit of glow around the headlights now if you view the render got just a very subtle glow around the headlights that looks terrific let's go with that <laughs>